Okay, this time on the laboratory, we're going to work on a Limax Village Collection City Sidewalks. Doesn't turn is what I was told. This is a 9-volt AC unit. <coughs> Excuse me. It did not come with the adapter, so I've spent the last few minutes making one. All right, now I have it plugged into my AC Variac over in the corner, and I have it putting out 9.27 volts, so we're good. And then I went and found the micro barrel. So we're going to test this and see if um, what's going on. Now, it is not fully assembled. And when I say that, I'm referring to this is hanging and the house has already been separated from its base. Uh, they were trying to fix it themselves, the person. So I'm going to make sure that's in the off position. I'm going to plug her in. You can hear it. You can see the lights on. Lights are on. No movement. So let's see what it takes to get into this. So I'm going to remove the plug and I'm going to go turn off my Variac. I don't feel like it's running all the time. It's a big transformer. You might have seen it in a couple other AC videos that didn't have power supplies. <clears throat> so I already know the house isn't attached, so i got to be really careful. Uh, here's the figurines that came with it uh, that were in the box. So they're right here. I'm going to move them out of the way so this doesn't turn. Uh, this came off of something. I have no idea where. It says council meeting, public welcome. I've looked at many pictures, and I cannot find this sign anywhere in any of the pictures of this piece. So if I can't find it by the time I'm done, uh, before it goes back, I'll just leave it up to the owner to glue this wherever they want. So I'm going to set that over there with the pieces. So, lifting the house, I see... Uh, is there enough room to move it? So there's the speaker. I have a broken set of wires. I do not know what they go to. And a couple of wires go up inside the house, which most likely are for the lights. So I'm going to set that back on, take a look at the bottom. At the bottom, there's a whole bunch of screws. I'm going to try and do this carefully. This is actually a pretty heavy porcelain house. So you can see there's a ring of screws, and there might be screws underneath the pads. So I'm going to check real fast. There are not. So, how can I set this to where I won't damage anything? All right, so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight screws in the bottom center. So I'm going to start by removing these eight screws and seeing if I can get into this. Now the motor sounds healthy. I can hear it spinning pretty good. I'm wondering if it's got a broken belt or a broken gear. And then once we figure it out, get it fixed. Maybe we can try and figure out where that yellow and white wire goes that's just sitting underneath the house that appears to be sheer or broken. Making sure I'm still resting on that case. Screws are rather tight. Well, I was looking online to see where the sign goes and to find out to verify the power, which is written on the bottom. I didn't notice it because the house is separated. Um, I noticed there's a very common issue with this to have the outer ring to stop spinning. There's a lot of people out there that have asked how to fix it. 
So hopefully I can show everybody how to do it. But on the bottom, if you don't want to flip yours over or you're thinking about getting this piece and they say that doesn't have a power supply, it's 9 volts AC and it draws 870 milliamps. So if you get a replacement power supply, you need to make sure that it at least, at least 900 milliamp rated. If you can find one that's like a thousand, it'd be better. You always want to have a, a buffer on the power. And then again, it's AC. Make sure that you put AC in here. You put DC in here, you might fry something. feel it coming apart. Looks like this top ring separates and I am going to whip out my fancy spudger set that I got and I'm going to see if I can get my finger or it in there. It's a direct drive motor, so that's interesting that it doesn't turn the thing. Uh, there's not a lot of slack on these wires, so that's going to pose a problem. But there are a couple of plugs, so I am going to, like I always say, if you don't remember where they're going to go, try and mark them. So I'm going to. that one. There. Unless you got small hands, you might need some being those pliers to get into this thing to get to the plugs. Come on. There, got it. That's one plug, two plugs. Now the only issue I'm having is this light. This light, that's my cord, and there ain't a lot of it in here. So, I'm going to see about twisting this whole assembly off to the side. Now this outer ring, if you can see here, has a lip, so you cannot pull it out over the top of the house. You'd have to slide it out under the bottom which is going to be really hard to do. So I'm going to, so here's your motor. It's a direct drive motor. It's a synchronous motor. It's probably AC, so if it gets bound, it can reverse directions. There's only two plugs, which is why I only used a marked one with the marker, because usually if there's multiple plugs, you use different markers for different plug colors. Um, your blob chips right here uh, on this little board stands up. We got a voltage regulator right here that is horribly loose. That's not a good sign. It could be broken solder joints. So I'm going to unscrew the circuit board. And we're going to take a look at the bottom. Yes, we have broken solder joints. That's probably not the cause of it not spinning, but that is a bad thing because that gets really hot, hence the heat sink. So, because of its being brittle, I'm going to take a picture of the bottom so I know where the stuff goes. I'm going to now plug her back in. And I'm going to watch this motor. It might just be a bad motor. And what we're hearing is the motor's not spinning. It's just internally grinding. Because inside here is another set of gears inside the motor itself. So, plug it in. Make sure it's in the off position. Turn on the power. And that's what it is. The inside of this motor has shot. Has shot. It's a 
number two screw on this one. And it's really tight since it's a motor. Uh, this is a D or a flat kind of C. It's a uh, prevents the um, gear from spinning on the shaft. Now, the internals, you look at this one, you see these posts. This one's a center drive, just like this inside. The center pin is the drive. Then it drives the gears all the way around consecutively. So this is the first, second, third, fourth, and then the last one, the fifth is right here. This does the same thing. It drives the first, second, third, and then fourth is the drive, which is right here. So that's what the inside looks like minus the little gears because I took this apart to use a little gear out of it because this was a shot motor as well. Uh, this has an internal gearbox. It's a synchronous motor or a stepper motor, but it's usually just referred to as a synchronous motor. Uh, this one has no markings on it, so I cannot tell you what the voltage was originally. But this one, the, the center is bad. It's grindy. This one might just have broken gears and they're really hard to replace. Because um, uh, popping this top off is a pain. That's why I kept this one to show you, because I showed this in a previous video. Um, I should probably throw it away. <laughs> it's, it's in my bad motor pile, because I recycle all these. So I have a stack of them sitting over here off to the side. So most likely the reason this doesn't turn, well, it's obvious actually, is the internals of this have failed. Yeah, it's got some grease on the outside. So I'm going to have to source this motor. I'm going to unscrew it and see if there's any numbers on it. So, I think it's kind of interesting. The speaker's inside the house, but yet there's a speaker grill right there. <laughs> That's kind of uh, uh, weird. Probably a generic base, probably the same base they use on the Ghost Around and the Roundup and uh, maybe the Mortuary Walkabout. It's probably just a generic platform base and then they just screw a different ring onto the outside to do the different covering. Because on a lot of them, the speakers are down low. So, that screwdriver is in Screws really tight. There we go. Stripping the head. There we go. So luckily, this one on the back actually does say it's an AC nine volt, uh, fifty sixty hertz, ten to twelve revolutions per minute, four watt, with a counterclockwise CCW counterclockwise rotation. Um, so if you see one that says CW, that's clockwise rotation, which means it spins in the wrong direction. So I need to find one of these, which technically shouldn't be that hard. Now, the hardest part to find on these is the revolutions per minute, 10 to 12. Most of them are 4, 5, or 6, 7, or 7, 8. When you start getting into the higher numbers, they spin at a higher rate, which means the, gear, the gearbox right here is uh, got a different gear ratio and they're not always the easiest to find. So if you can't find a 10, 12, but you can find, let's say, an eight, that means it's gonna still go in a circle, it's just gonna go slower. Or if you find one that's 14, it's gonna go faster. So, but the other important part is this right here. Now, when I replaced this motor that I replaced a couple months ago, this had a flat shaft on both sides. The new one did not. I actually had to take a Dremel and make the circular shaft a flat shaft. Um, so if you can't find one that has the D shape, you might have to take a Dremel tool and take a circular one and grind the side down flat until the gear fits over it.
and I've done that a few times just because finding some parts is nearly impossible. So there's so many variations of everything. And when you replace this, the wires don't matter too much. This is an AC motor, so it doesn't matter if you cut it and the wires are reversed, the motor will still work the same because it's alternating current. So, but my next thing is I want to try and fix this wiggly power regulator. In case yours is broke, it's an LM317F. Or sorry, 3171. LM3171. There's a smudge on it. So that way if you need to replace it, because they do get hot and they do burn out. So probably gonna have to use hot glue to fix this, not solder. The solder joints are still good, but the pads on the circuit board, all this light green is separating from the dark green. It's lifting. So if you put some hot glue on here, it'll actually hold this in place. The solder joints are good. I'm looking at it through a set of magnification goggles so I can get a better look uh, to see if it's a bad solder joint or if it's actually the board is failing. Uh, I believe this thing's about 15 years old from what I looked up and it's actually got separations everywhere. There's bubbles in the tracks, but all the other components seem to be rigid. Nothing's moving. I don't know if you can see if I move this slowly back and forth. There's bubbles where the copper tracks is separating from the PCB itself. So, so I'll probably just hot glue this thing and see if that'll hold this so it doesn't vibrate and break. I'm just poking around, making sure everything else is good from the top. None of them are wiggly. And then this right here, these four diodes, is a full bridge rectifier which takes the AC and turns it into DC so these LEDs don't flicker. So the only thing on here that runs AC is this motor. Just so you're in case you were wondering. All right, so I'm gonna pause for the moment and try and locate this motor, source it out. Um, but actually, before I do that, let's set this thing back over here. I'm not going to line her up. I just want to set her down. Like that. holding this house down is this broken yellow and white wire. Let me see if I can separate it from the glue. Wow, that is some hard glue. show you what it is. Let me see if I can trim the glue maybe. I'm just gonna have to cut the wire. The wire's cut. So, here's that broken yellow and white wire that's just sitting off to the side that's stuck in this hard glue. Um, it does not come out. I ended up just breaking the wires. So, let's, uh, let's take a gander inside here now. So this is a porcelain house. And we have a distribution board right there got some resistors on it that I can see. The yellow and white wire come off the bottom of that board. The orange 
and yellow wire go up to this light here. The red and white wire illuminate the tree, the Christmas tree in the front. The board itself has a light that illuminates this front window. It's just soldered directly to the board sticking up. So the yellow and white wire goes here, which is the light that illuminates the <coughs> kid waving in the corner. <coughs> Excuse me. It's broke right there. So it goes through dog legs, and then it goes right to here, where it's supposed to be soldered, and it somehow got glued in here, so when the house was lifted, it snapped. So to fix that, I'm just going to either try and chisel this glue out, because this is not, this is really hard glue. It's weird. If not, I can fix it right there by cutting the wire or soldering directly to the light. And then bring and extending this over and bringing it down. I don't know why they didn't bring it down this track right here versus this track over here. Because there's no other lights. Oh no, there's a light right here. Right here next to the caroler. And oh, okay, I'm wrong. And there's a light right here on the other side of the tree. So this wire actually was connected here and it broke out of this hard glue. So I had that backwards. So I need to reconnect this yellow and white wire to right here on this light. So these three light up. The one that illuminates the guy and then the light on either side of the tree and caroler. So that's a relatively easy fix. Just get a piece of uh, two strand wire and solder it on. Make sure you keep the polarities correct, meaning that if it's not the same color, because yellow and white aren't very common in LED wire, it's usually red and black. Um, that the white is still soldered to the white and the yellow is still soldered to the yellow. Don't reverse them because then the lights won't work. So, And then this you got the, L the lamp is soldered directly to the bottom of the board so it doesn't come off. But the speaker you can unplug. So you can take this mostly apart if you have to remove the white wire for the um, lantern, the light post, if it fails, and you want to replace the light post with a generic Christmas light post from uh, Lee Max, which you have some that are very similar to this, I'd recommend cutting the wire and re-soldering and not soldering the board because of the age of this, and with the, especially this one with the track separating. The heat of the soldering iron might actually destroy the tracks to where you won't have anything to solder to. So I'd snip the wire and then splice it, uh, solder together, use some glue or some small heat shrink to protect the wires so they don't touch each other or touch any components on the board. And that's because, again, the age, uh, when the stuff gets old and brittle, it has a tendency of falling apart. But, yeah. So at the moment, this has a broken set of wires and a bad light, or excuse me, a bad motor, bad light right there, and a set of tracks that are separated that can cause this voltage regulator, if this gets bounced around a lot, moving, storage, etc., to break, which would make this inoperable since the voltage regulator controls the voltage for the LEDs. Uh, the LEDs run at a very low voltage, generally right around 2 and we have nine volts coming in, and this probably drops the voltage down to a more substantial five volts DC or four and a half volts DC, and then the resistors up in here that were soldered to this board reduce the power down to basically the two volts that it takes for the LEDs to actually function, uh, except for this lantern or light post. This light post is soldered here on the bottom of the board, and it is soldered to this resistor right here. So uh, it's resisted its power down here because that orange light is usually around 2 to 2.2 volts. Anything beyond that, you'll burn out the light. Anything below that, the light won't, well, it won't illuminate. So 
Anyway, uh, there's uh, some basic information, if you cared, about this piece. But in the meantime, I'm going to do some research on the internet and see if I can source this motor and see how fast I can get it here so I can get this together and sent back because Christmas is right around the corner in about uh, four months. So I want to get it back well before that. So I shall return. It might be a couple of weeks for me, but it'll be moments for you. All right, we're back with this uh, Christmas house. And I, you saw what was wrong with it, and I made a separate video on how I fixed the motor. So that one will be up soon. But I did go ahead and glue the house back on, uh, put everything back together. It's the same thing as taking it apart, just backwards. And I fixed the wires that were broke, so that way all the lights turn on. So got the Variac at 9 volts, just so you can see. 9 There you go, 9.17 volts. And <clears throat> apparently I got the uh, cord wrapped around my hot glue gun. So, ooh, that was loud. Turn off the lights so you can see that these other ones now illuminate better. I'll turn the volume off too because it's uh, quite annoying. Um, it's really loud in here. So the lights illuminate the characters like here on the side. And these lights up here, that one and that one, that were all non-functional, now work. Uh, that one's brighter because it sits higher in the hole than that one does, but they're the same brightness. It's just the camera picks it up because it's more of a direct shot to the lens than the other one. So the tree is going through its colors. It might be hard to see. I'll try and cover that so you can see the tree is changing colors. There you go. Uh, the only thing I haven't done yet is glue on the sign, which you can't see because it's dark, but uh, glue the sign back onto the front of the building. Um, now, if you watch the motor video, you're going to know something about this. I'm going to turn the light back on. Uh, it's, it's a counterclockwise motor, so it spins in one direction. But I had to rebuild the motor, and it's not engaging the counterclockwise rotation. So sometimes it spins backwards. And to fix that, you just have to bind up the system or stop it. You, sometimes it works the power supply, the off on switch, sometimes it doesn't and you have to put your finger on it. Um, that's why, and I explained this in the other video, when it says CW, CCW, clockwise, counterclockwise means if it gets stuck it spins the other direction. The stopper or the hand or paw, arm, whatever you want to call it, isn't engaging correctly to prevent it from going the wrong direction. So every once in a while it'll turn on and spin backwards. Because the 9-volt motor is almost impossible to find, I have not found one and I've been searching for more than a month now, um, I just rebuilt the motor that was in here. And worst case is if it turns on, turns backwards, just put your finger on it to stop the rotation for a second and turn it or go off on a couple of times and it'll fix its polarity. But they don't make the motor that feeds this anymore and they don't, um, they don't have any aftermarket replacements that are easy. Uh, to find, as well as the only ones I could find were 12 volts, and 12 volts spins at half this speed. You see how fast this is rotating? This is just a 12 RPM motor, and the all the 12 volt motors are six, so literally half as fast, and that's half as fast at 12 volts. So at nine volts we're reducing the power again and making it even slower so these things just barely make its way around the entire place so um, it's all glued back together 
she's just like she's supposed to be. There we go. And like I said, the only thing that's missing is the council meeting public welcome sign, which I just got to find where it was glued. Um, I think I think it was glued right here next to the light because it looks like there's a chip in the yeah there's a chip in the resin. So I just got to glue this piece back down. And then put this back in its box and let the owner know that it does occasionally spin backwards. And unfortunately, at this time, there is nothing I can do to stop that because I cannot get the paw to stop jumping over its uh, cam inside the synchronous motor. So there will be a synchronous motor video. It's, it's kind of long. It's uh, like 40 or 50 minutes. And it will have the information uh, and the description of how I did it, the different types of synchronous motors, the reason I didn't put in the slower motor that constantly spins in the right direction. And uh, yeah, for fun, you'll even see me get a little tingle off of the, uh, the big machine here, because it's not forgiving. <laughs> it's not forgiving like the other machine that's DC. This AC one is not forgiving. So, um, there we go. Let that harden. I don't have any activator. So uh, that concludes this old house. And I'm not talking about the TV show or with Bob Vila. Um, <laughs> so, but this older Limax piece is now uh, functional. As, as functional as I'll be able to get it. And if I ever do source, I have no idea why that super glue is not holding. If I ever do source a couple of 9 volt motors, I will. Um, buy them and I can let her know the owner that uh, I can open this back up and replace it so it constantly spins in one direction and it doesn't reverse if it gets wedged or uh, turns on wrong so well, thanks for watching uh, until the next repair uh, we'll be back